this is a big one for you, Z. So we have the Swedes. We got to pause though real quick for everyone that isn't like a full on hockey nerd like you talk through, there's going to be three different leagues that come up for all these players. I know Russia is very confusing for everyone. I, I imagine Sweden's even more confusing. Talk about the SHL versus hockey else, Fenskin versus J20. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, it's similar to, actually, I guess it's kind of like the same exact situation as Russia. You've got the SHL, which is their NHL, the first pro division. Hockey All Svenskin, which is like not necessarily, it's not an AHL team because they're not affiliated with anyone else. It's just like Division Two. Like that's where Liam Ogren was playing because uh, Jugarda got demoted a couple years ago, relegated a couple years ago, lost in the final last year. So they're still. Um, in the all skin, I think they're actually in the semis now. Um, and then J20 is just U20. They've also got the J18 U8. So that's that's pretty self-explanatory. But yeah, so um, you'll see a lot of, like a lot of these top prospects that get drafted early out of Sweden. People get very confused because it's like they've been playing in the SHL all year, and it's like their stat line is like 28 games, zero goals, two assists, and they're getting drafted like 11th overall. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> What do you mean? It's like, okay, his number one skill is offense. He's a goal scorer. Um, but yeah, no, usually they play go back and forth as well. So you'll see a lot of, a couple of these guys, they've played Ausvenskin games. They've played J20 games. I didn't, I, I thought about, there are a couple of guys that have played like 15 J18 games. I was like, all right, I'm not doing all three. That would be like outrageous. It'd be pretty funny to put those in the stats. But um, but yeah, so they're, they're usually going back and forth. Um, and then a couple guys that just end up sticking um, in like the SHL. So I threw those in there too. And they can bounce back and forth between the J20 and the Allsvenskan as well, obviously. All right. Fair enough. Let's just give her then. First up. Not a sweet. This one's going to take a while. Um, no. You've be- talked about him for <laughs> quite some time. And I mean, Definitely getting all name team consideration. We have Michael Bronseg Nigord. Did I get that? Yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Ah. So that's the other thing. This is the Swedish region. Not all of them are going to be from Sweden. And by far the number one prospect coming out of Sweden this year is from Norway. And he is going – he's easily – the best ever Norwegian prospect we've ever seen hit the like the NHL draft. Um, ever, he ever. is not not in terms of like the draft, not in terms of the draft pedigree. This is by like there hasn't been anyone close to Bronsek Nigord. He is already like I mean in terms of this draft class, he is absolutely one of the most well rounded um, players. Where he probably isn't even that far from being able to fit into NHL games. He's got good size. He's a decent enough skater. He doesn't have like top top end speed but he's incredibly mobile like just in terms of like lateral and uh mobility agility um he's great in transition um and his shot is an absolute joke like it is he like slap shot people saw that too because he did play for norway in the world juniors this year norway obviously they were like it felt like every game they were like a thorn in everyone's side until the third period and then there was just like the floodgates would open they would just kind of hold their own but he played well i thought Um, but again, one of the most well-rounded players, he's a two way forward again, not far away from like being NHL ready, to be honest with you. Um, and before the world juniors, like I've never seen a hockey player have worse puck luck in his life. Like, I think he may have had four points in his first 20 something games in the Allsvenskan this year for Mora IK, who is one of the better teams, um, in the Allsvenskan after world juniors, I think he had points in like eight of his next 10, He's scoring goals. He's play, making plays, getting assists, um, kills penalties. Like he can literally do just about everything. The one question that people are going to have is how much more development is there for him? Like, is this close to what he's going to be at the finished product? I think that's not necessarily the case, but like that's where the, like, if you want to call it criticism, I guess, comes in. Um, and if you want to question like the actual, full on NHL upside. He absolutely looks like a guy that can be a like 
60, 70 point two way winger. He'll again, he'll kill penalties. He's got a phenomenal shot. Like he could score again, just gives you a little bit of everything. So he is my favorite player in this draft class. I think anyone that gets him wherever he's going to fall, which I put the tier 12 to 20, just because some of the guys in front of him have like insane ceilings. And while his is quite high, I don't think he's necessarily going to look like Nikita Kucherov out there, like putting up 130 points every year. Um, but again, already close to being like somewhat NHL ready. One of the most well-rounded players in this draft class. Um, and he's having a great playoff too so far for, for, for Mora IK. He's got three goals and an assist in their six games, um, including um, an OT game winner. So love Bronseg Nigord, my favorite player in the class. I would cry if Minnesota ended up taking him after getting robbed of Fisker Bolgard last year, I think he went one pick before Kubalainen one, one pick, one fucking pick. Um, but yeah, I, I think the world of this player, like he is fucking unbelievable. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I think the 12 to 20 is probably fairly a realistic, um, range for him to go. Um, and that's where I put his tier. There is range, I guess. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we're going to have a lot of all name team guys in uh, this sector because this next one here is one of my personal favorites. And I know you like it too. What a pick. Alphonse Frege. And I got to say a couple things on this one. First, you'll notice uh, as part of the iconography, anyone that's listening on podcast, you need to come check out on uh, the Soda Pod YouTube channel. I learned that the Swedes have a lot of pictures on Google images of these kids when they're like 10 years old playing hockey. So whenever there was one that popped up in like the top five images for results that gets thrown on. And it's uh, funny to just see the two side by side. Also, I've never seen uh, granted. Um, it's not like it's like some crazy phenomenon, but. What do you call a plus minus of zero? Is it just the the absence of a plus minus? Because he's not plus or minus. He is. He's just vibing. He's just vibes, dude. He's <laughs> just out there. He's I vibing. think I was literally like just machine going through the stats, like not looking. And then I was like laughing. I was like, I went zero. But that's pretty funny. I think there might be a couple. Where I put like zero plus minus, and this one I put plus minus of zero. Um, but. Alphonse, you said Frige. I don't even know if it's Frige Fry. Couldn't tell you. Um, Ooh, fry, that, that's fun. Six foot one, right around two hundred pound, left shot D man. I think this is so. And just to backtrack a little bit, this is the weakest draft class coming out of Sweden we've seen in a very long time. Where for the for a while there, there was other than Bronsag Nigor, it was a pretty like common belief that like there's not going to be any Swedes taken in the first round outside of Brodsag Nigord, who is Norwegian. Um, but the way that he's come onto the scene this year, he's one of the best skating D men in this class. His transition game is incredible. He's got, he's flashed way more offensive upside than he has in the past couple of years too. Um, and defensively he's solid. He kind of, again, like just doesn't really have a whole lot of weaknesses and just the growth that he's shown this year in terms of the actual transition game, how smart he is, he kind of just gives off like a guy that's going to play a very long time in the NHL. You might never hear him, but if he's on your team, he's going to be like your guy. Um, I he's still not, think not a direct he's flash terrible, right? But kind of your Jonas Brodin type. Uh, yeah. So again, like still pretty different because like Brodin's defensive game is just on a whole other level, and there's probably only a handful of players who do skate like Jonas Brodin, especially fucking backwards. It's insane. Um, but that, that'd be a whole other, we could do another podcast on Jonas Brodin's uh, backwards skating. Um, but Alphonse Frey, I, I, for me, he, I think in December, January, I was trying to like stop myself from putting him in the first round. But then again, just the progression this year in terms of his, like he's flashing playmaking ability. He's got a great shot. And the thing with him is you can not win the puck from him on the four check. He beats you every single time. And he's one of the best transition defenders in this, in this um, class, especially out of Sweden. So I am very high on him. I think he's got like serious, like top sleeper potential. I think he'll probably go 
late twenties, he might not even go in the first round. Um, but I'm very high on him. I don't, again, he's not going to be like power play one quarterback. He's not going to give you like over half a point per game, but defensively he's solid. His mobility is ridiculous. He's going to make everyone's lives easier on the ice, just in his ability to like retrieve pucks, start transition play. Um, and there is enough offensive potential. I think he can put up some points. I know it's just not going to be like, that's our guy running the power play. So I like him a ton. Um, and he's another guy that like this class in general in out of Sweden has picked up as the years gone on, which make made sense, especially at the beginning of the year. Cause like some of these guys are just like, there's just so many uh, tools that they have. That's just like, they haven't put them all together yet, but he's one guy that's like skyrocketed in the, in the rankings and he's in a lot of first rounds now. So curious to see where he goes, but um yeah, no, I love I love Alphonse Fry Free, however you want to fucking say it. Um, he's great. I mean, he is seven feet tall, so that helps. There you go. Number three, Lucas Petterson, which I don't know. The way Isha always pronounces Elias Petterson is Petterson. So I, I don't know how it's actually pronounced here, but we'll go with it. Yeah, Jesus. I think it's Luke Petterson. So uh Lucas Petterson, another guy I would say probably has a chance to go tail into the first. Um, he's great. It's just, I think for a long time and he actually NHL central scouting, they did give him an a grade preseason. Um, but like the play, the skill, the playmaking is insane. He flies on the ice. Um, very smart player plays a great two way game. Um, the question is how much the offense from the J20 in Sweden is going to translate to the NHL level. I think it'll take him a little bit to get there, but with the amount of skill he has, he's a very smart player. And the fact that he is a solid two-way centerman, um, and I do think he is a centerman in the NHL, um, I think gives him first round potential. I wouldn't be, again, I wouldn't be shocked if he went early, early second, um, but just given like he's taking over like Modo, their J20 team, not great this year, but he is legitimately taking over games. So the fact that he's well over a point per game um, on that team is very imp impressive. He's a plus 27, um, and he plays a fucking hard game too. So um, great two way centerman. The upside is there. It's just whether or not you really believe in it. Um, if you don't, then you'll probably take him early second. Um, if you buy in on the skill and the upside and like the, the skating ability, um, then you can, you can feel good about taking him late first round, but, um, yeah, no, like him a lot. Again, the fact that we ended up with like three or four out of Sweden that like I would put in the first round, that kind of like speaks to this class in general where it's like, yeah, they've got, there's potential there, but, um, you know, it, not, we'll not see, what we've like, seen in the past. Believes in it. Yeah. Right. It's I mean, there's no one that's outside of bronze, like Nigord who like, has any shot of like top 10. Do you think he has a shot at top 10? Bron St. Nigor, it's like, it would be like, Oh, like it wouldn't be like a, wow, that's a massive reach. It would be like, Oh, like a bit, probably somewhat of a reach, but like, yeah, I mean, he could play soon. So, um, and again, if you really believe in that upside, you take him. Fair. And we got to address this one for Mateo quick. We can hide this. Which was worse. Fisker Molgard for Z or Benson for Hoppy? I think Benson killed you. I, I think that was dark. That crushed my soul. That that hurt, me, that hurt me more than every Minnesota Wild fan who somehow was hurt that the Chicago Blackhawks <laughs> all over more. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. It's fucking so good. It was so I can't good. believe they didn't take him. What, like, how? How I, did really, the Wild not take him? What? How do you not hold him at gunpoint and make him not pick him? <clears throat> it's it's too good. It's yeah. too good. Yeah. Um. All right. We are up to number four. Is it Noel Franzen? Noel Franzen. Noel Franzen. He is a whole lot of fun. All year, he was top three in scoring amongst D men in the J 20. Um, and he did end up getting a couple SHL games. He scored, I believe in his first SHL shift. Um, he's got an absolute bomb of a shot on him. He's an incredible skater. The defense is hit or miss. 
definitely still a work in progress, but in terms of his like transition defending because of how good of a skater he is, um, he makes himself quite useful. But there have been like, I think I tweeted out a video of this OT winner he scored. It was he picked, I mean, this is guy picks up the puck between behind the opposition net skates out of the offensive zone regroups and then just takes it to the house himself just dicing everybody he's got insane skill again like the offensive potential is through the roof it's just is the defense going to be like steady enough to give him a meaningful like shot at like playing good minutes um, but like there is serious upside with no friends. If he does put it all together, another guy that was like, not an unknown, but based on how dominant he's been for Faryastad, like it's just undeniable at no point did he have any kind of slowdown. I mean, he put up 20 goals in 45 games as a defenseman, um, to go along with 24 assists in the J 20 this year. He played well in the playoffs as well. Um, so He's definitely one to watch. I've seen people who have like convinced themselves to put him like late, like 30, 31, 32 because of the upside. But I would probably take a little bit more of a measured approach. I put his tier 40 to 50 because that feels about right. Um, but I do think you're going to get a solid, solid demon with like so with the, with real good offensive potential if he can, you know, put together enough of a two way game. So I love Noel Franz and he is very fun to watch. Um, his highlight real is comical like i mean the goals he's like he does not score bad goal like it's just like whether it's just an absolute rocket launcher or he just like picks the puck up himself dances everybody at the blue line um and then takes to the house like yossi did last night against vegas in overtime um he's fun he i, I really 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 like Bill franzen so he just got in over the next guy um because of like the ridiculous upside so love him i he's one to watch for sure coming out of sweden Care to comment on uh, Mateo's statement? Farias, yeah, or, unbelievable. That the SHL team, Farias died like first round by second round, four game sweep against Rogla. They were up, I believe, one nothing with three minutes left in the third period today, too, and then ended up losing. So, um, that's why Liam Ogren will see if he uh makes his way on over to uh, Iowa soon. Um, uh, because that's what it sounds like. I did not see that coming, but we'll see. Wow. Well. All right, then moving on, number five, one that I wouldn't say is necessarily all name team worthy, but it's just a name that I think is nice. fun. And Simon, is it Simon or Simone Zether? Zether? What, what's the pronunciation here? I got to think it would be Simone Zether. Simone but Zether, we think. I'm sure it's wrong. Um and look this at this. Is... I've, I've got the evolution of Simone Zether, by the way. We've got like three yeah. different ages of him at the bottom. Um, and his strangely like large arm, just based on like it's kind of like when you hold a fish out when you catch it, that you like overextend. It's like, look how big this fish that is. That looks and yeah. it is big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is a guy that I am very surprised hasn't gotten more like love all year long. So you know, last year is a draft minus one in the J20. Um, let's see, 38 points in 37 games. He's a six foot three, 190 pound center that plays a phenomenal two way game. He scores goals. He skates well. Like he makes plays. He is a four checking demon. Like he, again, like another guy that just checks every single box and he's been producing since he stepped onto the ice um, in the J20. And this year, like, gets called up to the SHL and never steps foot in the J20 again. He played, like, fourth-line center for them. You have four assists in those 42 games. Even if he's probably – by the end of the season, he's probably averaging right around 13, 14 minutes, which is very impressive if you stick around and you're not, like, a big point producer in the SHL because, like, yeah, the guys that go the very, very early, usually they're, like, skilled – wingers who score goals and they finish the year with like one or two assists playing for two minutes maybe but they fluctuate back and forth between the j20 and the shl he just he was their fourth line center for 42 games playing again 12 14 minutes a night um and again like there's there's enough skill there that i believe that there is a solid middle six scoring center that plays a really nice two-way game i again i i don't know why 
he really hasn't got as much love as as I think he should have. Um, I don't know if I like let other people convince me to put him like forty to forty five to fifty five because if if I'm being honest, like he's in the same, he should be like I gave Franz in forty to fifty. Um, I understand why people question the upside. I still think there's enough there just based on what he did as a draft minus one last year. The J twenty on a Rogla team that won the J twenty last year, like was their one of their best players. And defensively they, and offensively, and, and he's a big Farga motherfucker. Is fraud, right? Faria yep, there you go. Faria there you fraud. Go. Print the shirt. Yeah. Um, so I like him a lot. I again, yeah, like another guy I think has sleeper potential just because I could see him going later than I would have personally taken him. Like I could see him going mid to late second round. Um, and I think even though I put my tier 45 to 55, I wish I put it 40 to 50. Um, but I like him a lot. I think there's a, a whole lot to work with if you're an S or if you're an NHL team um, and a kid like Siemens out there. And he's got incredible experience this year on a really good Rogla team who's going to the semis uh, for the SHL. Yeah, if, if only you had control over the tiers that you assigned. That's yeah, if only I could choose tough. over anything. If I had any choice in my life at all, you know. Tough break. It's always next year. There it is. Going on to six then. We've got another one that I think is like right on the fringe of all name team, but it's this one's less that it's a great name than it is like just fun to say. If yeah. I were God, I can't even. Uh, I was gonna say if I were Lapanta, but I can't fathom that. I also can't fathom being Ryan Carter because my hair will never be that good. If I were yeah. someone in between Ryan Carter and Anthony Lapanta on the the scale of uh, you know play by play broadcast. But Dinka would be my favorite name to say. That's just a fu it's fun to say. It's it's like Francisco. That's a fun word to say. Francisco. Francisco. <laughs> um, yeah, another guy that came onto the scene basically out of nowhere. This is a six foot three. I couldn't believe that he was listed at 183 for his weight. I think he's got to be closer to two. Um, and he is a fucking animal, but he is a phenomenal skater. He's got good hands. Um, you know, great, terms hair. Like the, uh, great haircut, nice mullet going, um, or at least great lettuce. Um, but the offensive IQ, like sometimes he'll, the decision-making is a big question. Um, uh, but another guy that as a right shot D man worked his way from the J 20 into the SHL for Malmo this year. And by the end of the season, he was firmly in their second pair playing 15, 60 minutes a night. I think he's another guy that scored in his first or second game in the SHL this year. Um, but in terms of just like potential, there's a ton. And he is a, again, just a beast, like not fun to play against. He's incredibly physical. He defends well. Um, and he's a big right shot D man. So I think he'll probably go higher than like Zether and maybe even Franzen just because of like the way that he plays and the fact that he's six, three, probably closer to 200 pounds, but um, definitely came on. So a draft eligible. What does he have a brother that's draft eligible too? Yeah. His brother's a center. He's also a fuck. He's a twin uh, massive. I think he's six, four uh, center also for Malmo, didn't, not the same even, level, but uh, didn't even uh, crack the top 10. Oh yeah. Couldn't. Um, but I think, but Dick has gotten in this is there's, strong consensus there is legit upside with him just given how well he skates at his size how well he defends um and like he flashes if he can hone in just like the decision making offensively there's like decent point potential as well again not gonna like quarterback your first power play unit um but like the fact that he's already playing almost 14 15 16 minutes a night in the shl as a 17 year old um it's very impressive so I think he'll go early second. Um, I put the tier 45 to 55 just because the hockey IQ is going to have to like improve a little bit, but like right on the same tier as my like guys like Zether and, and Franz. And I wouldn't be shocked if he went first, just given like the profile. Is he a guy you want to see the wild target just being that they are loaded up on the left side of their blue line? Yeah, he would be a decent target. I think like, you look like you said, like so many of those guys in the back end that are like legit prospect for them. Do you play on the left side? So it'd be nice to mix in a right shot. And like again, not a guy you're gonna be rushing, but the fact that he's already getting this SHL experience is phenomenal. Um and he kind of fits the mold of player that they like to take. So 
yeah, no, that should be a nice addition for sure. Um, but again, like I just love the like the fact that he's playing thirty, like like that he made the SHL and then just didn't go back down to the J twenty, and by the end of the year was on their second pair playing big minutes and like decent responsibilities. Like it's very impressive. So um, definitely one to watch. There's people that are trying to like. I've seen people put him in their first round too. So really, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, not for me, but you know, he's around there. <laughs> not, not for me, but for others. Yeah, fuck him, but like you know, uh, maybe. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> all right, number seven has to be one Easy of my front runners for all name team. Um, almost as good as last year's three namer. Which I guess do we have a a disagreement on who last year's three namer was? I. My two sons of last year, Felix yeah, Ungersson, the greatest hockey player of all time. Which one's better? Name, name, not player. Oscar Fisker Bolgard's kind of just like outrageous. It's like, I've got to give him that name. Yeah. Um, anyway. Saline Wallenius. What an awesome name. He's legit. I really have battle with myself where I would put him and where I'd feel comfortable taking him. Like there are plenty of people who have him like late first round. I feel like the consensus is right around 50, um, six foot, 180 pounds or so, or so it's 176. I just usually round up. It's just easy. Um, but the offensive upsides there, like, crazy skill another guy real solid transition defensively work in progress but like manageable i do question the offensive upside because he can skate himself into trouble like sometimes but i love the fact that he does try things using like he knows what tools he has so i like that he at least experiments the decision making again can be like questionable at times People and he also plays on the same team as Alphonse Fry, so they're both on Vecchio. Um, and like you can see, like his numbers offensively look better than a guy like Fry because that's Fry how you pronounce that defense. shit, Vecchio. Yeah, isn't that crazy? V A X J O is Vecchio. Yeah. I've seen, I've heard that both the com like the commentators in Sweden they've said that, and I've heard, just heard Vecchio. Jesus, this is like this is. Yeah, that's kind of mind blowing. See how right Isha feels reading most things. This is ridiculous. And uh, yeah. yeah, Mateo called it out, by the way. I was waiting for this and I wasn't going to drag you, but since he brings it up, Axel Sandin Pelica is far and away the best three namer of last year. I won't. Yeah, I've it. tried to block that one from my memory, too, because I hated that he went to Detroit. So that one really that hurt does me. also suck. That is a big bummer. Yeah, God, that one sucks. Him and, him and Moritz Cider. Ooh. Okay, move on. Yeah, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, but Sully Willanius, again, very curiously where he goes, just given the fact that he does have these like again, insane skill, phenomenal skater, transporting pucks, he's great. Um, it's just gonna he's gonna have to hone in the decision making. Um, there's times where yeah, he might make like a very questionable play, but you know, given the upside and like the talent that he does have. And the fact that he's he knows like what his tools are, like what his strengths are, and he's willing to experiment with those tools, I think gives him a decent enough shot to like be probably a second pair guy who puts up decent enough offensive numbers. Again, I put Fry over him because I see maybe not the same level of offense, but offensive potential, but his deep defensive game is just on another level versus Shelly Melanius. Um so I think like he could be so like last year I was losing my mind when um oh my god the defenseman the fucking blues took at the end of the year or end of the year end of the first round of course now I can't even fucking oh damn I know who you're talking about too and now I'm space <laughs> Theo Lindstein Theo Lindstein so I think he'll play a long time again just a really smooth skater like... I lied I had no idea who Theo Lindstein does not yeah. ring a bell for me at all so I I was way off track <laughs> yeah. A guy I'm more comfortable taking late second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he gives me those kind of like similar vibes where it's like, yeah, there's plenty of upside there just in terms of the skill, the skating ability, and like just the, the foundational tools. But like 
the thing with Sonny Mulaney is he's got different upside than a guy like Lindstein just because he's willing to experiment with them. Like Lindstein just doesn't like to he just likes to play a very safe game. Um, and that kind of is what I the opposite of like the Sonny Mulaney is experimenting with his own tools. So we'll see. Um, wouldn't be shocked if he went 50 to 60. Wouldn't be shocked if a team talked themselves into taking him late first would still surprise me, but early second, early, early second. Um, because yeah, there's there's upside there. Yeah, fucking fuck off, cost girl. Vecchio, Vecchio, Vecchio Bakers originally located in Minneapolis. Yeah, the Minnesota Vecchio. Oh, that kind of that's kind of nice, dude. Well, you don't know what he's saying, do you? I saw Lakers. Yeah, it's L.A. Lakers who were in. Yes. All right, we're. We're moving past it. Um, number eight in the top ten for Sweden. We have a first off animal. We we have to talk about not only I mean look at the the uh, the part game, but Oscar is it Volet or Volet? That's a fun one to say. Volet. Volet. This has to be my favorite Swedish team based on jersey alone. These jerseys mm -hmm. are on fucking real i am asp that's it they are the best they are so good so good yep oscar Bullet, winger out of Sheleftia aik which is where uh asp plays and lit up the shl this year by the way um the only thing that is going to take uh, that's going to hold oscar Bullet back while i don't know uh from going as a first round pick because the offensive upside is insane um is the fact that like 511 seemed unbelievably generous like when you see him on the ice like yeah he's 57 like easy like actually maybe not i don't know um he's very small but he is also like an asshole to play against so i like for me in terms of just like raw talent and upside and like offensive potential he's got first round like Upside. I mean, 41 games, 29 goals, 32 assists with 61 points plus 22. And he's also leading the J20 playoffs in points. He has five goals and five assists in three games uh, for Shalefia. Um Dynamic in transition. He can make plays, but his shot, the amount of power he can generate off like one foot, like back foot off balance, the power and precision that he puts on that puck is unbelievable. He lit up the J20 last year as a draft minus one. He is an older player for this draft. He's like a uh, 05, a late 05. So just missed it on last year's draft by like maybe a two months, maybe. I can't remember his actual birthday. But um, in terms of offensive upside, through the roof. He is small. The skating is, despite the fact that he is very good in transition because of how deceptive he is and how much skill he has, um and how smart he is like it doesn't really limit his play in the j20 obviously considering he's top five in points in regular season and he's leading the j20 in playoff points um but it's just the size the like lack of like actual separation like foot speed um that's gonna like hold him back but in terms of raw upside and like skill and again the shot is just a joke um like it is unbelievably fun to watch sheleftia on the power play because they always have five absolute studs on the ice, but he runs the show from the wing. Um, and again, he can make plays. He's got a ridiculous shot. Um, and the fact that he is such a prick to play against, like he makes himself useful in the defensive end. Um, but again, I think there's the size and like the lack of foot speed might hurt him just in terms of where he gets taken. Um, but like in terms of, again, skill and like upside, he's got first round written all over him. So, I'll be curious to see where he goes. I could see him going third, fourth round, just given like some of those limitations that even though, again, like he got to play 15 SHL games this year. Um, and like he got the typical treatment of like, you're small and you're a scorer. Go play in the SHL on the fourth line for like three minutes. Um, Legal so, I put the tier, so I put the tier 55 to 65. I would love to have like, I really try to convince myself to go early second round, but I understand the uh, 
the limitations some people might see, but like again, all he does is produce points. Like he is so fun to watch. I love Oscar Roulette. He's gonna be a sneaky son, a, a son sleeper. There we go. Number nine, which this one Z, I am gonna tee up and I'm about to piss my pants. So I'm gonna run and do that. Don't worry. After this, we'll give you a little pee break before we go into the second segment slash second episode, I guess, Parisha. Number nine, Linus Erickson. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, Erickson is just a, a very... I'm shocked that there's not more uh, Ericksons in the NHL from Sweden. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <clears throat> he is a fascinating one because... He is a phenomenal two-way center. His points don't necessarily jump off the page at you. Um, he's been heavily, heavily leaned on in the J20 when he's played there uh, for his defensive prowess. He flashes offensive upside. I mean, again, he got 29 games in the offense good this year. He put up 11 points, which is like he put up 21 points in 25 games in the J20. Um, so, like, there is offensive talent and skill in there. Like, He's definitely more of a playmaker than a goal scorer. Does not like to shoot the puck, but when he does, he does have a good shot. So it's one of those weird, like, kind of phenomena. But um, I, I think if the points, if there are more points there for him, he would go higher. He also this the second half of this season, um, he has blown in the rankings. Where like I put his tier sixty five to seventy five, just outside the second round. That probably will not stand true. I think he'll probably go mid second round. Um, now I have plenty of buddies who have him even like early in the first round. Um, but I mean, six foot, 185 pound center, really, really solid advanced two way game. Um, he does flash the playmaking ability. He's a great passer. You'd like to see him use a shot a little bit more and be a little bit more selfish. That's just not kind of his go to, but. Um, definitely one to watch. I think if he goes late second, early third, like that is another guy with potential steel written all over him. Um, and I mean, that's kind of the commentary on like all of the Swedes this year is like, there's so many guys who you're like, I would love to get this guy in the second round. Um, but Linus Erickson, Hoppy, I was just saying Hoppy's back. Um, if he goes late second, early third, he's another guy with like sleeper potential written all over him just because of that advanced two way game. Like again, like 11 points in 29 all Svenskin games after getting called up from the J 20 is, is quite impressive on a really good, uh, Drew garden teams too. So, um, I would I, I, skyrocket the rankings. I have, I was saying too, I have buddies who would like, almost if he could have done this all year long would have flirted with like a first round potential. Um, but he's always also like captain of team Sweden, wherever they go. Um, but he's just a solid, solid two way centerman. I like him a lot. Um, so I'm curious to see where he goes. So um, yeah. I like that. The conclusive then number 10 in the top 10 list for Swedish draft eligibles in 2024. We got, Melvin Fernstrom, which again, not going to get all name team consideration, but like a name that I just enjoy. Like Melvin is a first name is fun. And, you know, I love the the double dot over the O for Fernstrom. So the we'll umlauts. give him a little nod, a mini nod. That's how you say it in German. Um, I have no idea what to make of this player. I couldn't argue with his production the last two years for a rebro a rebro is also a team in the j20 that is like an offensive harlem globetrotter-esque like i remember so the j20 is also weird where the first half of the year it's every j20 team in the first division it's like a it's like a league table and then halfway through you have the it's the top 10 and the loser division so it's like the top 10 teams have their own for the rest of the year and then the the team that finishes last in the bottom half 
like they have a round robin to not get relegated into like I forget what the league's even fucking called. Um, so it's very weird, but he he's got decent size. The foot speed is a big problem. Um, uh, but I mean the points are insane. He's got 45 games, 31 goals, 32 assists, or 63 points, a plus 25, 28 pin, and he plays fucking hard. He does not give a shit about playing defense, which is a big problem for him, given the fact that he's also got like skating issues and the foot speed. But the skill is out of this world. His goal scoring potential is ridiculous. He's also, I think he's right behind Wallette in the um, playoff scoring race too. But you just, the skill and the IQ in the offensive zone is like, it's, I had to put in the top 10. There were a couple other guys I was like debating. So some of the honorable mentions, but I couldn't argue. Like he did the same thing last year as a draft minus one. Um, but the Arebro team, it's comical. I think they had the next closest team to them in goals scored, I think had like 40 fewer goals. Like they, all they do is just put up like insane numbers. Like every game it's like 10 to eight, 12 to two. It's, it's insane. Like all they do, it's, they hammered the overs. There you go. Um, but offensive upside for sure. There's big limitations with the skating and the fact that he couldn't care less about playing defense. I have, I know I have at least two or three buddies that did put him late first round, just given how skilled and how like how good of a goal scorer he is. Um, but again, you can't argue with that kind of production. Um, so I put him right there on 10. I feel sick. I think maybe I was a bit mean putting him in the third round. I think he's a second round guy. Um, a Probably. bit mean. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, the big thing with him is I just can't really knock him as much as I did, uh, just given his track record of ridiculous offensive numbers. And when he's played for Sweden this year, too, when he got called up to their, um, like the U17, the U18, in um, the Five Nations he was, I think, either second or third scoring there, too. So, like, all he does is score. It's just whether he's going to be able to, like, fit in to an NHL team. Because, um, I mean, if you're all points and, like, you, you're you not a great skater and you don't give a shit about defense, it doesn't really matter if you're putting up, like, 1.5 points per game in the Swedish Junior League. He's plus um, 25. So we'll see. He's plus 25. And it, yeah. it, you know he's going to be one of the guys that's done dirty. Just like we see happen to Russians all the time. I don't remember, was it Yurov or someone else where like they torched the league they played most of the year? But then all you see here for Melvin Fernstrom is six games played, zero goal, zero assists, zero points, minus two, zero pims. Like that'll be the stat line that gets read when he's drafted and everyone's like, he sucks. Fuck this guy. <laughs> we took him. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I, the thing with him though too is like number one, like the what he plays amongst his peers again, offensive upside is ridiculous. He's also an asshole to play against, and he's six foot one, right around one ninety. So like, we'll that's it. gonna help him. It's gonna help the stock. And like when he chooses to, and he decides to like be engaged, he'll at least try defensively. And again, like he fucking hits everything that moves when he's there. It's just whether or not he's where he's supposed to be. So I think he could work with that. And plus, like, if you can get that guy with that kind of offensive upside to just be engaged more, like, not necessarily, like, a solid two-way four, but if you can get him to be engaged in the defensive zone and give a shit, like, you've got serious, serious potential um, in him. I think my big – realistically, the big problem I have is the skating. Like, I, I, I have a problem with it. Oh, okay. He has a problem with it. Well, shit, we got through the esteemed top 10 list here for the Swedes. This, again, being the region that Z covers for smart, smart, hard R, smart scouting. Or is it hockey? Is it scouting or hockey? Hockey. Smart no. hockey. Scouting. They did a smart podcast. They, they briefly did a podcast, and it was... George R. R. Martin... Yeah, yeah. Smart yeah. scouting. Um, but we do have uh, Z remaining. We got to cover some honorable mentions for you. Um, I, I'm just going to kind of hand it off to you to address those because we've got uh, 
probably a more extensive list than what we usually see, just given that you're a little bit more entrenched with the Swedes. Yeah, so almost all of these guys I battled with putting them 10. Um, so that's why I included so many honorable mentions. Um, a couple that really stood out. Um, let me pull them up again. Um, oh. Jack Berglund. He's a six foot three, 207 pound center for Farias. Now he also played a bunch of SHL games. Uh, well, I guess not a bunch, but I think like eight or nine, maybe. I think I had eight. Um, scored a goal, I think, also in his first or second game. Um, insane skill. Uh, skates well, especially for his size. Not necessarily like a two way stalwart, but like the offensive upside's there. He scores goals, he makes plays, gives you a little bit of everything. He plays hard. Um, so. You know, whether he ends up as a center or a wing at the NHL level, I think he does become an NHL player just given the fact that he skates as well as he does and the fact that he's that big. Um, and he is very smart, especially with the puck. Great in transition. Um, so that's another guy I always have my eye on. Um, I think the week before I actually made this list, because we were supposed to do this last week, but, you know. <laughs> um, one guy who played World Juniors for Switzerland this year, I think it's Yamiro Reber. He plays center and wing for HV 71, uh, five foot, 1076 pounds. HV 71 has a bunch of guys who fit this profile where it's like, I would love to get any of them late second round. Um, insane skill. He did score. I think literally the week before I made this list, he, he put up, if you want to call it the Michigan, if you want to call it a little cross goal. And it was like a snipe. Like I, Full the goalie fully had it covered, and it wasn't like a dunk, it was from distance, it was insane. Like it was it was just unbelievable. But um, also played well in the world juniors. Now I put up a couple points, I believe, for Switzerland. Um, but crazy, crazy offensive upside again. I think you can work with him late second, early third. So I had to include him. Um, and then there's a couple big fucking defensemen. Uh, great name. For AIK, left shot D man, uh, six foot two, 200 pounds. Daryl Yuljanskis. Is that what I'm saying? Hey. Um, another, again, big, big boy, great skater, incredibly mobile with the puck along the blue line, 29 points in 44 games. I could see him going, I put his tier 75 to 85. I think he'll go earlier, just given like how well he skates, how well he defends, the fact that like. He is not a plug offensively. Like he is like his skill. He's got a great shot. So I think he'll probably go a little bit earlier than that. Um, but what real fun to watch. Name. Latvian. That's beauty. all I care about. Mm -hmm. um, and then just eh, two more that I'll spend any like, more, that I'll spend more than like 30 seconds on. Uh, Herman Troff, six foot three, 200 pounds on the wing. Um, he ended up playing 10 SHL games this year for HV 71, 21 points in 26 games in the J20, 73 penalty minutes. Um, he plays fucking hard and he scores goals. I think it was, yeah, 13 goals and eight assists. Um, ridiculous, ridiculous shot. Um, and again, he is the worst, the worst to play against. He is such a fucking asshole. Um, so I think teams will love him too. There, he had plenty of like early second round love too. At one point, I think the thing with him is like, yeah, the shots there. I question the playmaking. So in terms of like, yeah, his actual offensive upside, there's questions there. But like in terms of like an NHL style, teams are gonna love the way he plays, and he is a great skater at his size. So that's one guy. Um, and then a big another for AIK as well. He plays with. Yul Jansky's fucking <laughs> Gustav Spokvist, uh, six foot three, 200 pounds, defensive defenseman. Mean, mean, mean. 42 games, 12 points, and 65 penalty minutes. Um, I think at one point, my buddies over at EP Elite Prospects had him early second, too. I just, the upside you have to question, but in terms of his defensive ability, how well he skates at his size, and how fucking mean he is to play against. Um, you know, I think that's a NHL defenseman, no doubt. Um, but the guy I really had to battle with to not put in the top 10 was Carl Sterner, right wing for, for uh, for London, six foot three, 190 pounds, um, 34 points in 44 games, elite defensive forward that does flash some playmaking ability. 
Um, I could see him just given the fact that he's the size that he plays at, how well he moves and how smart he is in the two-way value you get out of him. I could see him going earlier than I put him. I put it like 80 to 95 just because mm-hmm. I do somewhat question the upside because it's just like not consistent enough offense for me to put him like firm second. Um, but I like him, like him a lot. And Carl, then I do good to mm-hmm. see you. Fuck off. Um <laughs> One guy, though, that I do need to mention real quick because he plays on the same team, plays the same fucking way as my boy, the greatest hockey player of all time, Bill Tinder Sorum. Great name. Zaki, Z A K I, Crooks. That is fun. Big but skinny. He's like 6'1, 160 pounds. Incredible right wing. Like dynamic playmaker. If he gets hit, he gets killed. <laughs> so it's gonna be a big problem. <laughs> but like his transition game, his cross ice play, like in the offensive zone, like his ability to just like no look, just feeding it from the corner to the back door tap ins is it's a joke. Like he is so fun to watch. I think he'll go third round probably just because he does need to figure out how to not get like crushed every game but very fun to watch very very fun to watch um so he's like sneaky one of my favorites i was watched because of unger sorum last year i was watching a ton of zaki crooks um and if he was just not 160 pounds getting fucking absolutely obliterated at times he would be much higher than he is but he is very like he is the skill the passing ability it's 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 awesome um so i like him a lot nice. there's also i put i did throw a five seven guy in there elliot sagrell also a i think very fun, fun. Yeah. yeah he's a beauty like um but yeah <laughs> that's all you have to say i threw him in just because his height oh he's filthy he's <laughs> filthy so why wouldn't you say that <laughs> But like, like you're doing him so dirty. Like he watches and he's like, "Oh yeah, I threw him in because he's five seven. Moving on. Yeah. I'm what? sure he is watching. I'm sure he is. I know he is. Yeah, obviously. Why wouldn't he? It's just funny. Um, shit. That's that's everyone then, huh? Did it? Did the thing? Mm-hmm. 